Hello, hi, I'm Yoni. I don't have a nickname, so you can call me Yoni. <laughs> so yeah, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about uh, what have been, what we have been doing for a couple of months. Uh, so it is going to be co this. My presentation is going to concentrate on the modification UI and templates. Uh, so I just want to touch, touch on the <clears throat> subject that you discussed just a moment ago about connectors. So I think there's uh, multiple different kind of connectors in here. So what I'm going to talk about a bit is uh, the content side and the template side, which is touching the content. And there's basically two two sides for that one. So we have the front end connectors. So basically you can do uh, this kind of uh, traditional way of injecting content to the website, what we have been doing for, for years already. Uh, then you can actually co connect Frosmo to front-end frameworks like React, Vue, Angular. So we're working on that one. So that's one type of connector. But then we have a, another type of connector, which is uh, this kind of content connector. So, for example, we have uh, this contentful. Uh, it's a headless CMS. So we have this kind of co connector for that one already built. And we are looking <coughs> for more content management system integrations in the future. But then there's the other aspect which Mixu talked about is the data, like incoming data, like product data, conversion data, or user data. And those are those can be also thought as thought of as connectors. So my my presentation is gonna <coughs> focus on the UI, what we have been doing, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about how those connectors can be used, those uh, front end connectors and content management system connectors with our modification UI and templates. So to start off with the agenda, so I'm going to tell you what's new and then I'm going to demo our UI and, and show a really like, simple example and then I'm going to talk what's next from the point of view of the UI. Gonna take this off for a while so I can walk. Uh, so what we did basically, like uh, I don't know if uh, how many of you have used our Frosmo control panel, which is called I'm gonna shorten it for FCP. But we have had the modification UI for years already, and and obviously it was starting to uh, show its age, and and we we kind of like uh, had a mission to completely redesign it from these different points of views. So first of all, we wanted to simplify the modification creation process. We wanted to enhance the touch and feel and so that basically it could uh, be in line with what, with what we have already there. So we want to have the like unified layout for the whole FCP. And, and as this is basically like a, one of the most critical parts of our UI, we wanted to spend time on it and really think about the workflows of the users. And at the same time, what we did is basically <coughs> we came up with the idea of using templates, which we already have, and, and kind of like enhance those and make them uh, a tool for developers to create nicer, nicer, like uh, a way to, for developers to create nicer looking UI for people who are not that technical. So these are the reasons, basically, some of the reasons why we did it. It's the most used feature in Frosmo. And we, we have recognized like two main user personas. There's marketing people who, who want to use, actually use and like uh, create those campaigns. But then there's also the developer point of view, because that marketing person can't do everything by themselves. So they need the developer to do, do these kind of like logics a complete, uh, complex logic behind behind the scenes, or like uh, change, change, change the layouts and such, such. So, with that, what, what that in mind, we we kind of like had the developer UI already in place, and and we needed to improve the marketing person's point of view, and we want, wanted to support the workflows of both. 
Uh, so first I'm going to go through the modification UI in a bit, like uh, bit by bit. So this kind of design principles, what we did, <laughs> is basically uh, it, it comes down to these four W's, what we have been preaching about these four W's for, I don't know, at least one year already. I think Rika came up with the idea originally. So uh, it, it all starts, uh, so these are screens of our, of our UI, new UI. It all starts from the who, like who do you want to show the content to? So it's a tar target audience and we have the segmentation and segments, which is our, our kind of like a, a, a way to target to the users. Then we have the where, it's the placement. Uh, so it tells on, on which page, on, on which part of the part of this page are you, do you want to show the content? It might even tell you the exact event, like you, you can go a bit further. It doesn't need to be a page load, but it can be like if user uh, kind of like uh, moves a mouse away from the screen. So maybe he, says, he has this kind of exit intent, then we can show content. Or maybe he clicks, clicks a button there, the page doesn't reload, but it shows up something else. And then we can show, show some content in, in the page. Uh, then on the right right side we have the when, so we want to control when when it's being shown. So we have the start date, end date. You can you can define even the hours and in the days. So the options are, are all all found within this kind of like defined schedule. And the last but not least is the what. So it's the content, and and that's where basically the templates come into place. So uh, um, this is a bit confusing slide, but I'm going to try to explain it as best as I could. <coughs> so keeping in mind that uh, there are two user personas, we have the marketer view on the left side and the developer view on the right side. So what we previously had, we basically had this kind of HTML editor and it, it's, it's there still. Uh, it's just basically like that. We have added this kind of a schema, so a structured way of defining that what does this HTML actually waits for. And it, uh, while this is defining uh, what is it like HTML is uh, expecting, so all the parameters, it also creates this UI on the left. So in this case, we just want to have a simple banner. On the, on the bottom and the center, we have a simple banner, which has a, a background image, uh, some title and a button and obviously like then the button is a CTA URL so called action URL so on the left side basically you can define these options and this is the marketer view so the marketer person doesn't need to care about what's the actual code what what has the developer done developer has defined everything for him and and basically this simple uh, demonstration or simple Simple template is just for demonstration purposes. So when, when I was like, a, there's a, you can basically could create a lot more lot of complex scenarios here. So this is, this is basically really easy easy to look or like you can see see what's happening here. But like here, so what we could actually do with this uh, our connectors, so. So the content for connectors, a content management system connector, we could show here instead of this kind of like text inputs where you can input the data, we could show that content which is coming from the content management system. <coughs> are, you, are you still following me? Yes. Great. And basically this is the HTML on the right side, but that could also be the actual front-end code could be done in your website. So you, your, if your website is done with React, it, could, it doesn't need to have this HTML content within the Frosmo, but it, it just has the, all the logic there already in your website. And basically this UI here in the simple banner, it just passes these kind of parameters to your website, your front-end 
connector, that React, React code. Okay, good. Uh, now I'm gonna switch to demoing. So I'm gonna demo, demo a really simple thing. So basically what we, we did there, I'm gonna show it, I have a bit different, uh, different uh, piece of content. So this is our retail, retail demo site, done, done by our sales. So they're using this one to demonstrate to the customers. So what, what I did here is, basically you notice the orange banner on top. There's this Black Friday sales. So if someone hasn't noticed the Black Friday is tomorrow, I think. Uh, and now we have in our demo site, we have a 30% off, or sorry, 50% off from Power Tools. So it's one category in our retail shop. And you can see other, other content as well, like this banner. It's also done with Fosmo, and it's kind of this kind of like a standard a banner card deck. Then we have a product recommendation here, it's the featured products. And that's also coming from Frosmo, so you can basically like do a lot of things in, in one place with Frosmo. We have also some some like pop-ups here, but let's see if I, I, I can probably, I'm, hopefully I'm not going to show them here because I'm going to concentrate on the top banner here. So this is our FCP, so first control panel. Um, I have already selected these modifications and overview. So this is showing a list of modifications available. So modifications are a piece of content that you're going to display uh, on, your, on your site. So everyone who has used Frosmo already, this should be a familiar view. But basically this is a listing all, all the modifications that we have. Actually, um, I haven't, that's not true because I have filtered it with this kind of banners and pop-ups here. So we have this labeling, labeling system so you can categorize, categorize the modifications. So I'm going to show you in a while this top bar banner, but first I'm going to show you how to start creating a modification. Yo, so this, this is basically completely new. So the previous view was available already, but now we are moving into uncharted territory, so called. So first you start with creating modification. Uh, you give a name and then you have to decide what type of a modification it is. I, by the way, are you guys seeing this one? Good. So we have three options. We have A-B testing, multi unbanded and personalization. So what is the difference? Well, A-B testing, obviously, you want to test two or more pieces of content against each other, which one is performing the better. The multi bandit it's, it's the same kind of testing scenario, but there actually, there's this machine learning algorithm which decides uh, which one is gonna, gonna win and starts to show the winning content like more. So the A for in traditional A-B testing, you're going usually like running the test for a while, let's say two weeks, and you see the result. But with multi bandit the actual like the, the algorithm starts to check at which which one of these variations is winning. And the one is was winning so seems to be kind of like better. Then it starts to show that one more and more and more. And then it's, it can kind of like auto adjust itself. Then the third one is the personalization. So this is basically, there's no options, options to add more content. So more like different variations of content. So just one, one piece of content. So the kind of like use case could be that if you're running AP testing, you, you find out the winner, then you create this personalization modification out of that winning variation. All clear? Good. Now I'm gonna move to this top bar banner. My, I'm really proud of it because I created it yesterday. So 
So here you see the same same UI that I showed in the slide. So there's segmentation, and placement, and content. So for this this demonstration purposes, I didn't I didn't take any segments. So I'm going to show it to all. But I could best target this one. For example, the people who are interested in power, power tools, or maybe they they have already bought power tools, and then you want to show this kind of discount only for them. Or maybe you have more than one banner. You have like 50% off for power tools, and then 50% off of something else. And then you want to show this power tools modification to only the people who are interested in power tools. Yeah, so now I'm going to jump into this content. So I'm just going to click click on the variation name. There's variation one template top bar banner. <coughs> Sorry. And here I can see, see the, the marketing person's view. So basically like here, there's an image. It's going to say sale red. So I have uploaded an image there. Then there's a text of Black Friday deal 50% off from Power Tools. So if you remember, it was here, the same, same text. And then we have the Browse Now button, so we can verify that, OK, it's there. And so basically, this is really easy to edit here. You don't need to know any code. It's, it's already done for you. I could change the discount to 20% only. I can save. And then I'm going to basically like that. This is another feature that we created. It's a preview functionality. Uh, this is in production, so I could just reload the page. But if, if you have a uh, <coughs> modification which, which is not yet active, you could use this preview functionality. So you can see it, see it live on the site. So when, we, when I click the preview, if everything goes well, I can see there that the Black Friday deal 20% off. Any questions so far? I'm going yes, one question. Yeah, so the question was that do you need to predefine the segments, right? Do you, you need to create them beforehand? Yeah. And currently, yes, unless you're doing doing this kind of like a, I think that's a, a device. If you if you know the device, then you can set the device rules. And we have this kind of advanced settings here, so you can you can do a couple of things here. You can set the desk, uh, device, so desktop, mobile, or that tablet users. And then you have the this decil, so, so if you want to limit the number of people who's going to show, show the, uh, see this modification. So decil is basically all the users in your site, all the visitors in your site, is split into 10 different groups. And then this decil is a way to limit, uh, limit, limit the people you want to show this modification to. But you can use, for example, UTM tags segmentation rules. Yeah, yeah. So as Mick said, you can use UTM tags to a segmentation rule. You could also have these triggers. I'm not going to dive into that one, but that you could uh, define that this this basically the, then it's defining the placement. So you could say that okay, people coming from from certain tag UTM tag or or certain 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 kind of like a referral is is coming there. Okay, this was the any other questions. Uh, now I'm going to move into the developer view. So what's actually uh, in the developer view, this is the template feature. So I have a top bar, top bar banner as a, made as a template. So what this means is, let's scroll here, uh, it's really simple, <coughs> like, a HTML, so like a few lines for HTML. Code, but but like uh, for for others than developers, it might might not be not that nice to edit it, and you really don't know what you should edit there. So that's why we have the schema schema here, and this is based on this kind of JSON schema standard. 
So you can write a, a, a JSON, JSON object or basically developer writes it and it releases it to learn and there's some some like quite nice features there like uh, defining the types types of the inputs and such. But for this this example, I think this is like 22 lines of, of JSON code. So this is the developer job. So basically workflow goes then that the developer creates a template and then the marketing pe person can start using it with the modification UI. Just as I displayed on the presentation. And if you're interested in knowing more, please, I, I'm going to be here this morning or if if you if you want to know like you can also contact the CSM or, or TPM or like support some managers from Frosmo. Okay, any questions from the UI before? Uh, so yeah, so the question is that is there any restrictions of which kind of libraries you can import and what kind of restrictions to the code? So basically it's HTML, JavaScript and, and CSS. So obviously like if you have already exposed your JavaScript code in, in, in your site, then you can use that one. But currently like you can't like use this importing features features like advanced JavaScript features. But we have, have for that kind of like, a, you can uh, also create like, a, as, as I said, I displayed this HTML JavaScript CSS way, but most of our professional services actually using the Speed React way. So we have our APIs for that to upload this more complex uh, React based or some other front end framework based modifications there. And yeah, and actually, and I can relate it to this one. I can actually show like uh, what it would mean if you have a React like React uh, front end front end connector. So what this actually does is we have the preview here in the template. Uh, this provides this kind of like object, so data structured data, which is then used by the HTML. So when you have the front end uh, connector, so React for example, then your React component actually receives just the structured data and then it can use use it as it wants. Uh, this might, might be a bit too technical if, if you're a marketing person, but developers should understand. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, up to, to assumptions. I'm a technical guy, so I have had to explain this thing to our our non-technical people and it, it has been hard in, at some time. So <laughs> that's why I'm, I'm not, not kind of like always convinced. Okay, so I'm going to continue about what's next for the UI and templates. I'm not, 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 this is only for the uh, the UI part that we, I just, uh, just showed. We obviously, Mix was, Mix was talking about the uh, whole roadmap. But for this modification UI, we're, we're rolling this out already. We have rolled it out for, I think, majority of the customers. And, and, and we're trying to gradually roll it out for the rest of the customers also. Then, obviously, like uh, it would be nice to have example templates to get started on. So that's also something that we're working on. And, and the last part is that we try to continuously improve the UI. So if you have any feedback, don't hesitate to call, uh, contact us. And the, if you haven't noticed yet, or if you're going to the FCP, there's also a feedback button there. there. So you can give feedback directly there. So if sometime, something is annoying you at that exact moment, there's a feedback button, just push it, give, give, uh, give feedback right away and we will try to fix it. Mm -hmm.